Here's the kind of question that you've been looking at quite a bit, okay? This is back from the greatest coefficient exercise, right? So the question gives you this, and what it asks for is, what is the greatest absolute value of the coefficient that you can find, okay? In other words, come in. Welcome back. Just grab a seat. In other words, don't worry about the sign. Don't worry the, about the fact that that negative is going to make it alternate back and forth and back and forth. Just tell me the biggest number, okay? Irrespective of negatives. So when I see that, when I see that the question doesn't care about sign, the first thing I do is I say, well, therefore, I'm going to change the question so sign is no longer an issue, okay? The difference between 1 minus 7x to the power of 9 and 1 plus 7x to the power of 9 all the numbers are the same, but this guy will start with a 1 and then it'll go minus something, plus something, minus something. And all the numbers are otherwise identical, okay? So therefore, I'm going to say, consider this other guy, solve the question for that. The rest of it marches through just fine. You consider your k term, your k, your k coefficient, I should say, your k plus 1 coefficient. You do your comparison, and then you get to the end, and off you go, you get a number, okay? So, no big dramas. However, do want to point out that they don't always ask you, they don't always say, I don't care about the sign. Sometimes they do care about the sign. We looked at this yesterday, okay? So here I think is probably the best way to go. If they're no longer saying consider absolute value, I still more or less solve the question the same way with one little difference. I add something on, okay? I say, just like in like equations reducible to a quadratic, I'm like, oh, well, I solved a problem. Come in, come in, come in. I've solved a problem that's related to yours, but it's not your problem. So I need to go back to the way you phrased it, see what differences there are, and then account for them. So we said the difference was, um, was that negative sign, right? And it's gonna make some of the terms negative. So what I do is I come over to here, and you can see I've written down all my terms. Have you noticed, this is a really useful, this inequality thing, even though it takes a long time to write them all out, super helpful. I can know if every alternate one is negative. Which ones will they be? Okay, now the first term, think about it. The first term is just going to be, I'll come back to the original thing, mm -hmm. is just going to be uh, 9c0 times 1 to the power of 9. Yeah? I'll, I'll write that down actually. Uh, sorry. 9c0 times 1 to the power of 9. Yes? And for completeness sake, I can say I have zero lots of those. Are you, are you comfortable with that? Now tell me, is that positive or negative? It's positive, okay, good. That means, when I have a look here, this one, that C naught, that's okay. But the next one is negative. And then alternating after that, and alternating after that, and alternating after that, all those guys will have negative signs attached to them, okay? So I have to take them out of the running. Clearly a negative one is not gonna be the greatest coefficient if sign matters to me. And then I look back and I say, okay, well, does that affect the answer that I've got? Has that invalidated the answer that I wanted? The answer is in this case, no, I'm fine. Eight, eight is still one of the positive ones. So thumbs up, my answer is preserved. However, if it was actually invalidated, if I find, uh-oh, the answer was C7 and C7 is negative, okay? The answer, the next step is simple. You just say, well, it must be one on either side, right? And just like I evaluated C8 and got a number, Evaluate C6 and C... Sorry. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm imagining if it was C7. Just evaluate the ones on either side. One of them must be the biggest because that's the way the coefficients work. Does that make sense? Okay. Question. How would you draw the inequality if they were alternate? Sure. Okay, so what I would do... Uh, like that. I would say... I would still write this because these Cs, they all apply to this guy, which I've just kind of manufactured, right? So it's still okay. And then I would say, uh, at this point here, I would say, but, for, and then I'm gonna go back to the original question, right? I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say, but for that power of nine, um, what did we say? Uh, all the odd ones are the ones I'm gonna take out, right? I'm gonna say, see, sorry, yes. Even, well, I'm looking at odd numbers, like the ones, threes, fives, etc., rather than first, second, third. Anyway, you get what which ones I mean. I'll say C1, C3, C5, etc. They're all negative, right? So I'm like, therefore, I'm going to test. I'm, I'm literally going to say test C6, test C8, or whatever it happens to be, okay? So I'm going to leave the inequality. I'm not going to muck around with like, oh man, which way did they go? Some are negative. That's just confusing. Don't need to worry about it.